I'm Curtis Shoemake. I'm a studio painter with Cool Mini or Not, and today we'll be reviewing the Big Sister and our new plastics. As you can see in the video here, they have some very nice detail. Mold lines aren't too bad. There's just a little bit going down the sides and a little on the other side. So it'll be very minor cleanup work. arm is basically the same. These pieces are high quality plastic so they'll hold better detail, whereas the weapon is made of polystyrene so it won't bend as much. I'll start by removing the pegs from her feet so that we can add her to a custom base. Now we go in with our X-Acto knife and just trim off some of the mold lines. Being very careful when you do this not to destroy any extra on the model. slightly go over the mold lines with your knife or your file or whatever you prefer. Now I'm cleaning up the mold lines in her hair and just kind of making sure everything looks neat and tidy before we glue it together. And flip it over, repeat the process on the other side. Just remove the excess trimmings. We set that aside and we start cleaning other pieces. Clean up the line on the gauntlet. Once the two pieces are clean, we get the glue ready, and then we fit the pieces together. Just a little drop of glue in the socket. And then pieces go together very easily thanks to our new designs, as opposed to the old joints they now have fitted sockets that just slide into place so it's a much easier uh, build now go over the pole arm make sure it's nice and clean as well a little bit of glue Fit 
that in place as well. together in about five minutes. Now we, uh, we've uh, placed it on its base and we went out and primed it and now I'm just mixing up some paint to start the base coats. This mix is uh, I believe it was olive drab and some uh, tan shadow as I'm about to start working on the flesh tones. Once you get the paint down to a nice thin consistency, you just want to start going over the model and applying your base coat um, just very generously. We'll speed this up for you. You'll notice that uh, it's not completely covering on the first go over. And that's completely normal. It'll take multiple coats before you get a nice clean surface. So uh, we apply uh, about two or three coats depending on how much of a rush you're in. Um, so at this point, we're still base coating, uh, but I've started adding in some of the highlights with the, the successive coats to bring it up a bit more and define the muscle groups, things of that nature. And now we're applying our mid coat, which is just a uh, straight tan skin. And we're just going over the muscle groups in different sections and adding our highlights. Here I'm highlighting and when you highlight you want to always drag the paint up towards your light source because if you're using thin paints then it'll pool at the end of your brush stroke. So if your lighting is coming from the top like I've placed it in this model then uh, if you brush upwards then your highlight will finish up there. So highlighting your thighs, and then we're going to speed this up again. Here we're adding in highlights to define her back and shoulders a little bit more. Come back. 
back around. I think we add some more to her abdomen. highlighting you want to try and keep the streaks as non-visible as possible so make sure you're using very thin down paints if you're going for something like this uh, the thinner the paint the better because then more of your previous coat will show through and you won't it will have less banding and the, the gradient will be much of much more of a smooth transition I believe right now I am applying uh, a tan highlight. Yeah. Again, mixing in a little bit of the olive shadow to give her more of a darker skin tone. And I'm just mixing the paint in the palette. And get it nice and thin to the right consistency. And now we apply our tanned highlight to the uppermost regions of the uh, defined groups that we put in with our mid coat. This will be the the highest ridges where the light is most extreme. Uh, so you want to use this coat very sparingly, but again, it'll still take uh, between two and three coats to get this stage done as well. Applying highlights to the abdomen. speed through this section for you just to get, keep it going. So right here I'm adding in highlights for her collarbones and her upper chest uh, just to make everything just a little bit more defined and neat. It's more things to look at and adds an extra level of detail. Finish off the arm. And now we're applying final highlights to her face and her head. Right here I'm off, uh, applying the highlights to her other shoulder.
so the skin tones are coming along nicely now. They're just about done. We have to touch up a few more sections. Just going over, adding some a uh, few minor final touches, and just making sure it overall looks nice and clean. As natural as possible. Alright, so now that the highlights are done, I'm going to apply the tattoo that's on her head. So I start by mixing in some olive shadow with some marine teal, and then I add a little bit of the base skin tone. That way it has a bit more of a fleshy appearance. And I just carefully go over the top of her head, and I add in a little bit of a swirl pattern. just to match up with the concept art a little bit. And freehand, uh, it takes some practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually not as hard as you might think. So, you just go through and finish that up. And it doesn't really show up in the video too well, but we'll show you a picture later on and you'll get to see the full detail. Right now I'm blacking out her eyes uh, so that when I go back to them later, they'll be easier for me to pick out. Now I'm just cleaning up her face a little bit where I got a little messy with the black. And also cleaning up the tattoo a little bit more. So right now I'm just doing some touch up work to make sure everything's nice and neat before I move on to the next section. painting her earrings. Right now I'm mixing a little bit lighter shade for the teal so that the earrings can be highlighted. And just add a dot of each, add a dot of the paint to each of the earrings. That way when you look at her head on, she'll be really pretty. And then 
and now I'm just smoothing out the transitions a little bit because that was kind of a drastic highlight. Now I'm doing her teeth. I start with a brown uh, tint. That way when they're done they'll look somewhat unclean as if she doesn't really brush. And then I'm going to go over them with an off-white for the extreme highlight. And I'm just going to carefully go in and add the detail for it. Teeth and eyes are one of those things, again, they're difficult at first, but once you get practice, you can do them all day, and it won't really be a thing. So just going back in and fixing it up a little bit. I think I got a little messy here so I'm going to go in and clean it up. Is the skin tones. Now we're going to move on to the loincloth. And we start with a red brick just to get us a nice deep red for the base coat. Again, thin it out with your wet palette and then apply generously. So, just going over the model and looking for the best place to start. start brushing on our deep red. I chose to start here just because it was a large open area and it, I could be a little more uh, free with my brush strokes without hitting anything. And then and from there I moved on to the more delicate areas and just, you know, just took my time and just run through it. everything that's going to be this color. And then I also apply the deep red to her eyes because I wanted to have sort of a glowing red eye effect going on with this particular model. So we started off by making her eyes a very deep red. Next we apply a brighter red. And same as the skin tone, you're going to want to keep the highlights towards your light source and only go for the raised edges. That way you get a, so, uh, an almost natural lighting effect. Carefully 
go over the model and apply our mid coat of the red. Red's a very hard color to work with. It's hard to highlight, it's hard to shade, and it doesn't go on as smoothly as some of the other colors even after you get it right. So this, sec this section would take some patience. Uh, but you, you just gotta keep working with it. And red, you can get to look nice, you know, with like three or four coats. Um, so yeah, again, it's just, you need patience for this section. And otherwise, it, you just shade it as normal. One thing with red, though, is you can't highlight with white and you can't shade with black because if you add white to red it makes pink and if you add black to red it makes brown. So when you are highlighting with red you need to deal in other shades of red that have already been made up. So in this case I went from a red brick to uh, blood red and then eventually uh, more of like a fiery orange color mixed into it. Um, you can add yellow in some cases depending on what sort of red you're going for but um, generally speaking if you add yellow it's gonna look more orange so you have to use it pretty sparingly. Right now I'm adding a highlight to the eyeballs and making them stand out more with this new blood red. And then I come back to the section I was just working on to apply another coat because I had to let it uh, sit there and dry for a minute. And we repeat the same process as last time, only we highlight a little bit less uh, successively each time we go through. So whereas last time I highlighted the entire thing, now we'll only maybe highlight you know, half of it. Just finishing up the mid coat. Almost done with this section. After we put another coat, a uh, couple of coats on here, should be going into the final highlight for the red. So now we've mixed in some Phoenix Red with our Blood Red to give it more of an orange highlight. Um, this will be the color we use for our final highlight. It's a very drastic color so you need to be careful when you're using it, but just with any other extreme highlight you just use it sparingly and go over the raised edges. Right now I'm finishing up the eyeballs. You'll notice I'm not putting pupils in them because when you do a glowing eyeball effect, uh, they're not really necessary. So 
So right now we're just adding in the, the final highlights on the loincloth. Going over the edges, and bringing in this more orange color to make it stand out a little bit more. And you'll notice that I keep adding in the previous mid coat to some of these brush strokes, and that's where the orange went on a bit thick and was a little too harsh. So I went back with the previous coat and smoothed it out a bit more. And don't worry if you get a little on the base like I've been doing, we can fix that up later. And I think that's it for the red. Um, I think now we're doing the boots. Yeah, so now we're doing the boots, and I wanted to keep them kind of black. And the way you do black is you use very dark grays or dark blues, depending on what sort of black you're going for. In this case, I decided to use a dark gray. And the method for this is to um, leave about half of whatever section you're painting completely black and only shade or highlight up from there. Um, so right now we're applying a base coat of the dark gray. And it went on a bit strong so I'm going back in with the black and I'm fading it back down. It's important not to go too bright when you're doing blacks, otherwise it will come out looking just more like a gray than it will anything else. So now we're moving along and we're just applying our base coats now that we've got the colors figured out. And again, just keeping it very dark. Um, just also making sure the transitions are as smooth as possible. Because when you're doing black, if you're not careful with it, it's, it gets very messy very quickly. So you just want to use very thin paints again and just apply the base coat sparingly. Not quite as generous as when you were doing the, the reds or the skins. Now I'm doing her glove. Again, uh, you want to highlight towards your light source. So in this case, we're doing the top above. You'll notice that I keep the bottom half of the glove completely unpainted. Uh, that way it appears black. Alright, right about now we're finishing up the base coat with the other boot. Again, just keep it clean, 
make sure it's at least half black still. And then it should be just about ready. Yes, okay. So now we're just uh, smoothing out a little bit more on that boot. And now we're applying a highlight to the black. This is used extremely sparingly um, to keep it from going too gray. Uh, trying to keep it as smooth as possible still. Um, or we just go over and we add our extreme highlights. And there's a bit of an intricate swirling pattern on the side of her stockings here. So I'm hitting the Mo the uppermost uh, ridges of that pattern. Okay, here we're going into the the actual pattern itself and applying a teal turquoise kind of color, uh, just to add some nice contrast to the the stocking itself and also with the red. Um, this sort of green color is pretty complementary with the red, and look, I, I think they happen to look nice side by side. So, just add in some more marine teal. bit of the, or the worn olive. Let me mix them together. And we carefully add this into the lines. And you don't have to get a super small detail brush for this thing. You can if you wish. Uh, my brush that I'm using right now is a Winsor Newton size 6. So it's a fairly large brush. Which, uh, just goes to show you can do this with just about anything as long as you're careful with it. Some nice swirling lines. By the way, try not to talk when the machine's going. Mm -hmm. There you have it. Uh, the boots are, the the stockings and the gloves are all done. So now we're painting the sandals, and we're base coating these with a uh, sort of a chestnut gold. It's um, a fairly bright brown. It's almost yellow. And I'm just gonna go over these real quick. They're not too incredibly uh, detailed, so it's a fairly fast section. Um, mostly we're just applying the brown uh, 
and you don't, uh, we're not even being too particularly clean with this because we're going to make it have sort of a, a grainy texture. So you don't need to be super precise with this one. So that's the base coat for the sandals. And now we apply a highlight. Uh, we just mixed in an off-white and uh, got a slightly brighter shade. And we're applying this to the upper ridges and also making some lines in the, the flat sides of the sandals to make it have more of a wooden texture. So now we're moving on to the non-metallic metals. Um, we're starting with regular metal first because it's a little bit easier than the golds. Right now we're starting with a dark gray it has a bit of a blue mixed into it. This one in particular is called Stormy Gray. And non-metallics are a fun technique, but they can be very time consuming. And if you don't do them right, they just look like a weird gray. So we start with a base coat. Um, we start with a base coat and we apply it all over anything that's going to be metal. That would be her metallic hand, and the shaft of the pole arm as well as the blades of it. And just like uh, everything else we apply one coat then we come back and add a little bit more of this, uh, this coat to uh, give it some highlighting. Next we go in with a uh, what's called a cloudy gray and this will be our mid-tone. And uh, just again using very thin coats and applying it as smoothly as possible, shading up towards the light source. Uh, a lot of times with non-metallic metals, you'll want to actually shade in reverse, but the way the this one was positioned, it felt more natural to shade it this way. Um, again, you, you can shade it however way you like. It's just um, this was a personal choice. Uh, Again, um, some of these coats do go on a little harsh, so right now I'm going back with the base coat and smoothing out the transition a bit. And then we're speeding it up and just kind of moving on and doing this to the rest of the model. I typically apply my mid-tones about maybe like a quarter of the way up from where I just applied my base coat. Sometimes maybe in even like halfway up the thing. Um, really you can start it wherever you like um, as long as you can uh, cleanly blend between your uh, base coat and your mid-tone, you should be fine. And now I'm adding some hard lines to the edges. Right now I'm adding some hard lines to the edges of the weapon just to make them more clearly defined. And when the model is done, these edges that I'm adding will actually be what helps make it look more metallic, as well as the uh, blending. So you can see I'm applying a super thin coat of the next highlight here. This is uh, misty gray and it's a really harsh transition from the cloudy. So it takes a good bit of blending to get this to look right. Um, so I'm letting those coats dry and then applying more hard lines 
just to flush this out a bit. And once these those first two coats have dried, I'll go back in and I'll add another layer. And we'll smooth this out. Because right now you can see some banding on the 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 main blade of the halberd here. So now I'm applying highlights to the, the shaft of the weapon. When you're doing cylindrical, so when you're doing cylindrical items such as the shaft for the halberd, you'll want to they they shade differently. You only want to paint the highlights on two one half of the weapon and then its corresponding side on on the other half so um, in this case you'll you'll notice that it's just a line on one side and then a line on the other for your extreme highlights so as you can see the metals looking nice and clean now It's just about done. I have to add some more highlights to the gauntlet. And then it'll be just about ready. And now, just to give it a bit more depth, uh, we're going to go over it with a teal wash, uh, just to have it uh, with some sort of almost a weathering effect, except not really. It's just to make the blade have uh, just a fun, different tone to it. So we mix down a very thin coat of the teal, and then we just give it a wash down through the base coat area. making sure not to go too hard, that way uh, it, it'll still seem smooth and natural. And that's the non-metallic metal finished. It looks pretty nice. Uh, and now I believe we're going to move on to the non-metallic gold. Non-metallic gold tends to be a bit more finicky than regular metal, I find. Um, there's a million different ways you can do it, and if you don't do it properly, on whichever way you choose, it can end up just looking like a really weird yellow. So we start by applying a base coat of chestnut gold for our particular blend here. And just like base coating anything else, you want to go over it, make sure it's a nice clean coat. Um, so it'll take, you know, two, three, sometimes even four coats depending on how thin your paint is. And you just want to make sure everything looks nice and smooth before you start adding your highlights. We'll speed this up for you again and just yeah, move on. The 
the same uh, the technique for non-metallic gold is going to be the same as your normal non-metallics it's just again the color selection is going to be the key here and depending on how you do it you'll either get a nice gold looking thing or you'll just get some sort of weird yellow so now we're applying the base coat to the rings that are coming out of her flesh And we're also going to apply the gold here to the pasties on her chest. Finish up the rings that are holding these up. You may have noticed by now that I still haven't done the hair, and that's because I've been using it as a handhold to get better leverage on the model. And if I had painted the hair by now, um, I would have worn off paint with my hand. A lot of people will generally use uh, like corks or something to mount the model to, and they won't touch the model at all. Which is fine, it's just not the way I go about things when I do my work. I typically hold on to either the base or one particular section and save it for last. In this case, I decided to do the hair last. So we're just going to speed this up a little bit and go through the, the rest of the base coating process. the base coat to her shoulder pad as well as the arm on her gauntlet. So we're finishing up the base coat here and then we're about to go into the mid-tones and because this is so much like non-metallic metal uh, I'm just going to quickly talk about what colors I used and then we'll show you a quick shot of what the finished product looks like. In this case, I went from chestnut gold to a palomino gold, then I used a buckskin pale, and then I used an off-white. In this case, it's uh, linen white by Reaper Master Series. Uh, again, you'll want to you'll wanna shade up to your, your light source, paying attention to the edges, and again, very smooth coats make the transition as gradual as possible. And now we're going to finally move on to the hair, which I saved for last because, as I said before, I was using the hair as a handhold. And your hands will rub paint off if they continually touch the model. Um, so I wanted the hair to have kind of a, a blackish appearance, but not the same black as the stockings or the gloves. So this time I went with a dark blue. And I'm just... I started out a little too blue, so now I'm applying a wash to bring it back down. And hair can be a little tricky. Uh, I still struggle with it from time to time. Uh, basically, we're going to apply our base coat, 
once we have a tone that we like. And then we'll add in a slightly brighter blue. And then you want to highlight up towards your light source, but don't worry too much about hitting each individual strand as you can add a wash later to bring back the recesses. So, so now we're applying our highlights, I'm trying to make it look as clean as possible. more highlights eventually we're going to give it a wash just to bring back the recesses and tone it down a bit because like I said before I wanted sort of a darker hair tone so we apply a, a dark blue wash to this model And then we're going to go back in and put just a final extreme highlight on some of the individual strands to make it look more interesting when you look at it head on. Applying our final highlights here, cleaning it up a little bit again with the wash. And now I'm just doing some minor cleanup work on the shoulder pad where I got a little messy. as well as the clasp in her hair. And there you have it. It's uh finished version of a big sister ready for the tables it turned out pretty nice and this only took a few hours